right. Welcome to an episode of Jiu-Jitsu Therapy with Coach Chris Mize. Um, this is the first time we've used this format for the uh, Jiu-Jitsu Therapy program. Uh, we've been doing some YouTube videos and things like that, um, but we're going to have a go at some podcast work with the help of Coach Chris Bowen at his studio. So he's been very gracious to let us do that. Um, here talking with me today is uh, one of the guys that trains with us, uh, uh, Coach Mike. We might call him Manchester Mike. Manchester Michael? What do you want? Michael, to do? yeah. <laughs> Please, if you don't mind. Okay. <laughs> well, I wouldn't want to offend you. So <laughs> I know jiu-jitsu, you know that. <laughs> <laughs> you know jiu-jitsu. Yeah, my, Michael is uh, is a purple belt with us. Um and known him for years and all, and he, he helps us with our classes and stuff at one of our locations. So um, it's good to have him here today. We've been trying to coordinate this so where he could come in and uh, talk with us. But um, the thing we're going to talk about today is, is <laughs> it's kind of catchy. We're just going to say, is jujitsu your drug of choice? Uh, when you talk about jujitsu, guys, usually ibuprofen is their drug of choice because... <laughs> I don't know too many jujitsu guys that don't dabble in a little bit of ranger candy every now and again. I'm not talking lower tabs, uh, but, but, but ibuprofen are my friend and I, I do, I do take ibuprofen every day, but, uh, for a lot of people, you know, jujitsu is, is really something that they're addicted to is something that they need in their life. Um, and we just want to talk a little bit today about what makes jujitsu that addictive thing like a drug. Michael, I, you've been trained for quite a while. You trained, you trained in Arizona and yeah. you trained here. Yeah. So what, what's your thoughts on that? I really don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Notice I moved away from the mic yeah. on the screen that time. That was good. Um, well, I mean, you've trained in a lot, you've done other things. Yeah. That's, that's the thing. I think, if, you know, yeah, breezing out of other martial arts. It and, breezed. Yeah. yeah. Did. Um, yes. So. And jujitsu is, just keeps on bringing me back. I don't know. I mean, I can't pin it on one thing. It could be, it, it could be the meeting the people at the gym. You know, mm -hmm. the friendships mm -hmm. we've mm -hmm. we've we've created there. Mm -hmm. uh, the workout. It's it's one of the one of the things that I can do where I, I can't have my cell phone in my hand all the time. <laughs> right. <'Cause, laughs> right. Um, I I really don't know. Well, you know, there's a lot of factors. I mean, you know, a lot of people will say the exercise is good and it kind of gives you a workout like anything else, but you, you do a lot of things. And I know you, a lot of the, you know, you can't really at a certain point with your jujitsu training, you can't just do jujitsu. You have to do something kind of on the side to make sure your body's in good working order, whether that's some yoga and whether that's, you know, uh, I know a lot of people do kind of a crossfitish kind of workout or whatever, or just work out at home or whatever, but you have to do something to maintain the body, uh, with movement and everything. But, um, I, I think the, the thing that always comes back to me is, is the camaraderie, you know, the fellowship of, of this. And that's something that's unlike other things, even in other martial arts, you don't have that type of camaraderie that you have with jujitsu, probably because we're kind of for lack of a better word, kind of intimate with each other every day as we yeah. roll on the mat. And, yeah. and I think that's, you get to kind of know each other and, you know, you're kind of assisting each other along the path yeah. of it. Yeah, I've just come to the gym sometimes and just hung out, actually. Mm. Just to, you know, just to talk to the people mm -hmm. and just feel part of the family. So, yeah, that's a huge part of it for me, is, is doing that. Well, you know, Coach Eric Paulson says, you draw energy off people when you roll with them. So, I mean, if you're feeling kind of down, I know it's happened with me and probably everybody that's done jujitsu for any amount of time, you may come in and you're like, ugh, traffic, ugh, problems. <laughs> and then you get on the mat and it's like, bam, you just forget about it. I mean, it's just because um, one of the things you, you kind of, and we actually, I actually did a little video on it um, a while back talking about is jujitsu your meditation. And, you know, because you have to have that level of mindfulness when you're in there, you can't be thinking of <laughs> when you're rolling with somebody, you can't just be, you know, thinking about, you know, the power bill or anything like that, or the problems <laughs> you're having at home with your significant other. So, I mean, it does, it, it makes you kind of focus on what you're doing. So it is like a little vacation of the mind when you do it. And I've, some people, you know, balk at meditation. So it is meditation for some people. So, um, 
but yeah, I, I think that that's a big deal. You have to have that mindfulness when you're when no, you're think, in jujitsu. I think you make a really good point. Now. I mean, it's been multiple times I've gone in there, had a bad day at work, hit the traffic, whatever, had problems with the kids. Get in there, and five minutes later, I'm just not thinking about that anymore. Mm-hmm. And you know, not that I've forgotten it, but you know, it helps me lower the stress level, and I feel I actually feel great afterwards. Well, you know, and. When you when you talk about that along with everything else, you know it's it's the challenging nature of jujitsu. It's kind of like a it has a a learning loop, so you can tell when you're getting better. So that's that's kind of an addictive thing too. You know, you get the camaraderie, you get the the learning, the progressive thing. You see yourself getting better, and the challenge of every day coming in, and it's different every time. Like I say, sometimes we have, we say sometimes you're the hammer, and sometimes you're the nail. So one day everything is working. I mean, it's just like, oh, that's magic. This is how jujitsu is supposed to be. Then you come in and it's like, man, nothing is working. I can't hit a scissor sweep on anybody to save my yeah. life. So, I mean, you know, there is that challenge there. Um, and I think that keeps people coming back kind of as well. Um, I, I made a little note. I don't know anybody that's ever just uh, really gained a lot of weight doing jujitsu. <laughs> no. if, you're, if you're really training. Yep. You know, I mean, you don't, you don't, you're not like packing on the pounds usually. I guess if you really try, you could through, through whatever means necessary, through uh, uh, eating or just whatever supplements you're taking. You know, guys can get heavier, but usually it's about, you know, people tend to find their, I think, their ideal weight when they're doing jujitsu or their, you know, their level. You know, everybody can say, well, man, I wish I was 20 pounds lighter. I think anybody can say that. But, but realistically, you kind of find your balance weight if you're if you're training regularly i think that's the thing um you know i I, just like anything else when you exercise um you know you get that endorphin release anyway so and when you have that we talked about that learning loop when that happens when you when you get something that success of me is successive oh that worked you know that that's just like you get those chemicals released in your brain so it's just such a positive thing you know. Well, I think one thing it's, it's taught me as well, and it helped me with work and with life in general, jiu-jitsu has taught me that I can't strong arm my way through anything. Mm. You know, you learn really fast that strength really isn't going to be your friend in jiu-jitsu. Mm-hmm. You know, you got to learn mm-hmm. to relax. you got to learn to mm-hmm. embrace the technique. you got to learn to, to tap out when you, you know, when you have to. I mean, it, mm-hmm. it, it relaxed me completely. You know, I mm-hmm. approached life completely differently after doing a couple of years of jujitsu. Mm. You know, it was before I thought it was about strength, endurance, whatever, and that really pays a very, very small part in it for me. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I agree. I think if, if you're going to be in it, you know, everybody says, How long are you going to do jujitsu? Uh, you know, everybody says, Oh, for the rest of my life, man. Rest of my life. And, but yet their jujitsu doesn't carry like that. You know, um, you know, and people's perspective on their jujitsu, just like everything else in their life, changes over time. Yeah. You know, um, so um, it's just you, you have to it's it's I would say it's a marathon, not a sprint. So you've got to you've got to make your training work like that. And, you know, you got to start getting technical at some point because eventually the body starts to fail you a little bit, no matter what you're doing to it. And you, you've got to technically. Uh, get better or at least get it (laughs) you know you've got to get to that point where you can kind of work you know um but you know jujitsu is hard it's not easy and so to be able to have people that want to keep coming back because of the strength of like i said the the environment of it the culture of the school uh that's a big plus and just like i said that endorphin release they get when they're on the mat and like i said jujitsu is one of the harder things that people can do um, I know like CrossFit and some of the other type of workout programs are very difficult, but a lot of times the majority of people don't do those for the rest of their life. They just do them for a period of time, meet their goals, they get hurt, they fall out. You know, and jujitsu is one of those things that truly is a challenge, though, because yeah. you are getting banged up the whole time you're in it a little bit. So you got to train smart. Well, we, had, we had the head coach, Maureen Steary, come in for a class a few weeks ago, mm-hmm. and she used to. She was in the Pan Am. She threw hammer for the, the Tar Heels in North Carolina. And she came in, did a class with us, and she realized in, in a hurry that her strand, I mean, she's really strong, mm-hmm. really athletic. Mm-hmm. She realized in a hurry that that wasn't going to get her anywhere. And I saw her in class a couple of days later, and she said, I have never had a workout like that in my life. She said, I, I feel pain in muscles I didn't know I had. <laughs> I mean, seriously, she was really, really impressed with it. 
Well, I mean, that's especially when you have a like I said a world class athlete like that doing yeah. it. And and of course we've known from our experience too. You take a stand up back in the old days anyway. Everybody kind of cross trains now. There's no purists really in anything really. But you'd take a stand-up guy that had wind all day doing stand-up and boxing and kickboxing, put them on the mat, they're dead in two minutes. Yeah. But, of course, you could say the same thing. that You take a good a good wrestler, jiu-jitsu guy that's not used to doing a lot of just stand-up fighting. You know, a stand-up fighter will work them to death, you know, with footwork and yeah. stuff. So the trick is to have be able to deal with the thing. But, you know, jiu-jitsu makes you engage. So you learn how to deal with that pressure and stuff. And that's when you talk about – how it's changed your thought process mm -hmm. you know I, I think about how we jujitsu everything in our life once we do it you know we're always trying to find a you know can we just talk about it you know let's try to work around stuff uh, it makes me think of a, a story um, I live in a very rural part of Alabama and uh, my the person that owned the land behind me um, pulled up one day and he's not it was actually the guy's father so I didn't really know this guy and he pulled up and said, hey, I want to get a right of way back to my property. He had not went on down the road, but he wanted a more direct way. And I said, sure, man, whatever you want to do, just let me know what you need and all this. So two weeks later, I get a, a notice in the mail. I'm being sued for a right of way. And he wanted it to be a 30-foot wide right of way, like a 30-foot wide road back to his property. So I'm like, holy shit, <laughs> that's wide, you know. So I, I'm like... So I went out and measured the county road in front of my house. It's 15 foot across. So I'm like, he's wanting a road that's twice. He must be going to build a subdivision or something back there, you know, where he wants to be able to have cars, plenty of room to meet each other. So we go in front of the judge. We're going to have a meeting in front of the judge first. And so the guy had his lawyer, and I met with my lawyer beforehand. We talked about it, and we kind of devised a strategy. So when we get in front of the judge, uh, the guy comes up, and he says, so this is what I think, you know, you want a 30 foot right away back. And, uh, Mr. Mize says, you know, he didn't want to do that because it's very close to his house and he has small children and all this other stuff. I said, yeah. Uh, but out of neighborly friendship, Mr. Mize is offering you free of charge, a 15 foot right of way back to your property today. So if you, you know, um, and I said, your honor, 16 foot, <laughs> 16 foot wide road. And, uh, and he said, and your honor, um, that is one foot wider than the county road in front of Mr. Mize's house. And so the guest said, well, Mr. So-and-so, what do you think? Do you want to take this, 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 you know, this gift to the road back, which is wider than the county? He says, no, Your Honor, I want a 30-foot wide road. And he said, uh, Mr. So-and-so, I don't know if uh, that's a good idea. I don't think any court would give that to you no matter what. And he said, no, I want a, I want a, I want a 30-foot wide road, Your Honor. Okay, well, I guess we're going to court. So as I, as I stand up and I walk out the door, my lawyer went out and I'm right behind. I stick my head back in. I say, okay, I'm just letting you guys know that 16-foot road, it's going once, going twice. I said, if I make it out this door, that is off the table. And they said, nope. I said, fine. I get a call two hours later. Hey, we're not going to court. And he wants to negotiate for a 16 foot wide road. So anyway, he ended up paying for it. <laughs> but anyway, so, um, you know, that I, to me, I jujitsu it, you know, that's what we yeah. have to think about working around stuff. And, uh, you know, sometimes you have to yield a little bit, just give a little so that you can get ahead and get what you want. I didn't have a problem with the guy getting a road. I just didn't want him having a 30 foot wide road. And I didn't want to, yeah, I didn't want it to cost me, you know, 10 grand in lawyer bills either to try to do it. So, you know, we, jujitsu, once you do it and it's part of you, it's in everything you do. You so, can't avoid it. So how would you have dealt with that prior to jujitsu? Well, I would have got pissed, but I'm, <laughs> <laughs> you know, your, your first thing is you always want to go force on force. You know, it's like you want to knock heads. Oh yeah, really? You know? Yeah. And, uh, you know, it just upsets you when people buck up against you. Well, if you're used to it all the time, it's not, you know, like I said, jujitsu is good about, making you comfortable in uncomfortable situations. We do mm -hmm. that. So, you know, even if somebody gets in your face, they have to really push, push, push before they can take me to where I need to be. I can smile for a long time now. Yeah, that, that's exactly what happens. Yeah, you can breathe. You learn, right. you learn to cope. You right. learn to breathe. Yeah. You learn to smile. Yeah, when you don't have a 500-pound gorilla on your chest, you know, you learn yeah. how to do that. Yeah, somebody and, in the corner smiling now. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> those oh. most 500 pound gorillas. So, so but, did that, that guy got the road then? And he never built it. He never built it? No, he never built it. He got it. He paid for it. Wow. My, and uh, never built, you know. I've asked God for a 30 inch penis plenty of times. If, <laughs> if he came back and said, I'll give you a 16 inch one, you know, I'm fucking taking it. I tell you. <laughs> yeah, also. Well, it went there real quick. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Well, guys, we had an NC-17 rate, and we had to get, and we hadn't gone there yet. <laughs> so, but there is there is a little road that goes back, but yeah. the guy never paved it. You know, never did anything. You know, really substantial with it. He put a gate up. Right. You know, so but it was one of those things. You know, so it was just you sometimes just have to st step away from something to be able to recognize it. And in jujitsu, what we do is we've got to, we find these little bases to launch from, you know, we get in a place where we can operate from. And that's why position is important over just this idea of submission stuff. You've got to have a place to where your mind can settle and you can kind of work. But yeah. Jujitsu pushes me to a point. I mean, where you can't breathe, where you're really under mm -hmm. a lot of pressure, but the time that you can take that increases. You survive mm. a lot longer, so I think in in life, you're, I guess you can you can tolerate a hell of a lot more before you have to react mm. in that way, and usually find a way out. So yeah, that's that's the way it's helped me. Well, it allows you to slow time down. You're not just yeah. reactive. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, you learn to, well, build defensive things. It's like when with my kids' class, um, I try to train them to train their mind or to where they automatically have a response when somebody comes up like, Hey, Hey kid, can you help me find my puppy? Or, Hey, can you come over here? And I teach them to say, I'm sorry, sir. I cannot help you. That's their first response. It's respectful. Yeah. It's not, you're not saying no, you know, you're not giving anybody anything to work with, but you you've got an automatic response. And it also reaffirms to the kid, Hey, I don't need to go and do that. That's a bad idea. I don't know this person. So you're, you're kind of instilling that. And once you can kind of, that's like how jujitsu is. We need to have a, a structure up front and layers of defense as we go. So, you know, it's just like that. So I think you can do the same thing when you're out. If you work downtown, like I used to, you know, we would have people come up and try to grift us all the time. So you have this thing, how you deal with those people. Either after a while, you can't give them a dollar every time. <laughs> you know, somebody comes up. So you just, you develop, you know, and some of them you develop relationships with because you see them every day, but but you learn how to deal with stuff, you know. And uh, you've got to come up with a good response that kind of, like I said, you don't want to offend people, but you've also got to stand firm to where they aren't going to manipulate you. That's that's a big piece. Well, yeah, it helps me state my values and stick with my values, you uh -huh. know. Mm -hmm. and, and, and actually hang out with people that have the set shared values that I have. Right, right. Before I would tolerate stuff before and then, you know, internally sort of be building a counter mm -hmm. and get pissed off mm -hmm. and then explode on them. But mm -hmm. now I can speak my mind a lot mm -hmm. easier, more relaxed mm -hmm. and hang out with people that have the, the, set, the shared values that I have. Well, I think, you know, too, you tend to be like the people that you spend the majority of your time with. You know, if you if you spend mm -hmm. your time with, and again, not just talking about jujitsu people. Oh, I'm more like a jujitsu guy. It's <laughs> it's more like those those people, what those people do in their outside world. You know, too. I mean, whether you know, are you hanging around with guys that's you know, not to say anything bad, but are questionable behaviors outside of the gym. You know, mm. meth labs, whatever. You know, <laughs> I don't know too many meth guys that do jujitsu, or I don't know. I mean, but but I mean, but uh, then you got guys that are you know professional guys that one they're not going to try to take liberties on your body and try to hurt you because they don't want you to hurt them either. You know, you need to have a working relationship. And that's part of, like I said, the duration of jujitsu because, you know, jujitsu is a, it truly is a lifelong endeavor for some people. It may not be. Um, and again, the, we were talking about, again, not to get off the subject, but you know, jujitsu was designed for war. It was designed for fighting and self-defense. Now it's changing. That's a, that's another podcast topic one day about the evolution of where jujitsu is and you know the purists or whatever but you know um your jujitsu and what you consider important about your jujitsu is going to change over time as i'm pushing my going into my 40th year of it here in a few more years you know so you know it's just uh it's just something like i said you have to find what's important to you and for for people to come spend time in an area it has to be important to them because there's so many things outside that draw from it, kids, significant others, job, everything. So, 
um, it has to be something. Like I said, I don't think we've really come up with anything just then, but we know what affects us. Yeah. It makes us feel good to go to jujitsu, and it's important, and that's why we all still do it. But, uh, Michael, thank you for oh, coming no in today. And, uh, again, I appreciate Coach Chris Bowen for being our producer, and uh, um, I'm always impressed with him. He comes up with stuff every time I talk to him about this, and he'll, he'll, he'll like – you know, he's an ace at it, and I'm like, oh, I don't know what's going on. But anyway, again, thank you guys for listening, and um, be on the watch for our next episode of Jiu-Jitsu Therapy with Chris Mize. We'll see you later. Bye.